we will continue to solve problems in our current topic that is about simple strain today we will deal with this problem a steel bar of cross section 500 mm square is acted upon by the forces shown in the figure determine the total elongation of the bar for steel consider e is equal to 200 gigapascal we have already solved forces acting on its the segment of a bar like this in our previous example so i will provide the link below you can make use as a reference so how to solve for the process acting on each of the segment of this bar the technique is to pass cutting plane that is cutting plane a does a at every segment that is b does b and c does c for segment one two and three respectively so if we pass cutting plane a does a b does b and c does c we can have this free body diagram to the left of cutting plane a does a and in between a does b here is our free body diagram between B and C, that is our free body diagram, and to the right of C the C, here is our free body diagram. We have also to label the correct direction of forces applied on each of the segment. 50 kilonewton was applied to the left on segment AB. The 15 kilonewton near the junction of A and B is applied to the right, and the load applied at third segment, that is 10 kilonewton is acting to the left and the port applied force at point D is acting to the right so those are the correct direction of the forces applied on each of the segment of our assembly as the segment will be severe we will replace them with a force acting on it let the force acting on segment 1 to be P1 the load that will act on segment 2 to be P2 and at segment 3 will be P3 we have also to label the direction of the forces but since we do not know where will be the correct direction of the forces we have to assume the directions so for p1 we will assume that it is acting away the pre body diagram or we are assuming that p1 is under tension after solving the equation and if our answer yield a negative number means that if our assumed direction will be incorrect and instead of under tension it will be under compression but after we perform the analysis or the calculation and it will yield a positive number and therefore our assumption here will be correct. So we will assume P2 is acting toward the free body diagram. So it means that that is under compression. So this is under tension. Then for P3 acting toward that is also compression. So after we perform the operation just like I have said before, it will yield a positive number. Our assumption was correct. But if it is not, it will yield a negative number then our assumption was incorrect. So we can now apply summation forces along x is equal to zero at every free body diagram that we have here. So for this free body diagram, we will apply summation forces along horizontal is equal to zero. We can see that P1 is acting to the right, that is positive, and 50 is acting to the left, that is negative. Our assumption, rightward forces are positive. So therefore, we can solve for P1, and that is equal to 50 kilonewton it came out to be positive here it means that our assumption that p1 was under tension was correct then we will move to another pre-body diagram we know that 15 that is acting to the right rightward forces are positive then p1 that is acting to the left okay then p2 that is also acting to the left so that is negative in our equation p1 and p2 we equate it to zero then we will replace the value of P1 that we have obtained before. So that is equal to 50. Then this is 15, the applied load near the junction of segment 1 and 2. Then we can solve for the value of P2 from this equation. And P2 will be negative 35 kilonewton. So what does the negative sign indicate? It indicates that our assumption for P2 that it is under compression was incorrect the final or the correct direction of p2 will be under tension we write here tension and that is equal to 35 kilonewton that is what i am trying to explain before then we move to another pre-body diagram we will also apply summation forces along horizontal to this pre-body diagram rightward forces are positive so we have p2 that is acting to the right it is positive in our equation the negative 10 that is acting to the left the applied force at third segment of our assembly so that is negative in our equation together with p3 that is acting to the left so that's also negative in our equation then we will replace the value of p2 
with negative 35 since that is our answer here negative 35 for the value of p2 then from this equation we can be able to solve for p3 and that is equal to negative 45 kilonewton the negative sign indicates that our assumption for the direction of p3 was incorrect and the correct direction will be tension and not compression so i write here tension and that is equal to 45 kilonewton so after we solve for the values of the forces acting on each segment we can now apply the formula to solve for the unknown so we know that delta is just equal to the simple formula pl all over ae so from the problem the values of areas so that is equal to 500 mm square for every segment together with modulus of elasticity was given so we can now substitute the value for p that is equal to 50 for p1 and the length is equal to 0.6 meter so we just replace value of the length that is 0.6 then we multiply it by 1000 to convert it to mm so for the 50 kilonewton load acting on segment per segment or segment one we multiply it also to 1000 to convert it into newton okay so to be consistent in our units we have to convert the value of the force into newton and length into mm so after we perform the operation we can have the value of delta 1 and that is equal to 0 0.3 mm then for delta 2 that is equal to pl over ae and the force acting is 35 so we multiply it again by 1000 to convert it into newton then the length of the second segment is one meter so we multiply it by 1000 to convert it in mm then we divide by the area and the corresponding modulus of elasticity so this is 200 gigapascal to convert it so that it will become megapascal we have to multiply it by 1000 that is what also we did on the first equation so that it will become megapascal or newton per millimeter square to be consistent in our units so it will be equal to 0.35 mm and for delta 3 we just replace the value and convert it to newton and mm for the values of p and n and for area there's no need to convert that is equal to 500 mm square and for e we multiply it by 1000 to become megapascal so newton per millimeter square so we can find for this value that is 0 0.563 mm so since all forces are under tension deflection will be elongation and not shortening and it's equal to delta 1 plus delta 2 plus delta 3 but if there will be under compression to the segment of this assembly then we have to consider that displacement will be negative so here since those are positive all under tension so we can find for the value of total elongation of 1.213 mm so i hope that you have learned a lot from this example to those who want a copy of this final pdf just like and subscribe comment down your email below and i will send it to you thank you